Delighted to be joined by Patrick Mullins. How are you, Patrick? Great, yeah, had a, had a great couple of days, so couldn't couldn't be better. Just after riding the winner here in Ferry House as well. Horse um, had his one run a couple of years ago in, in Newcastle in, in England, and uh, he's obviously come to use recently enough, has he? Yeah, I think he I think he might have had a tendon injury. Um, so we've been minding him at home, and my worry today was he might not be fit enough because we're not being hard enough. Um, and we went a good gallop, and it's proper soft ground, so I thought it was a performance that can probably be marked up. I think he, I think there's more improvement in him. And you, yourself and the second horse drew a long way clear of the third, and you were giving the second horse an awful lot of weight as well because he's a four year old. Yeah, I'm on a Knowles, you know, Knowles always run well. Fairy House be quite a local track for him. Um, so, like I said, I think my one could be one to watch out for now. Uh, you had a great Christmas, Faheen obviously being the highlight, and Charajan. Um, what are the plans for Faheen and how is he? He came out of the race brilliant. Um, I sure it was a magic result. Um, a proper fairy tale, you know, for a horse of his age and all the trials and tribulations he's had of, you know, getting injured and falling and pulling up. And, um, you know, he, he really enjoys chasing. And the one thing if you take out of the race is, in the middle of the race, he's the only horse of yours pricked enjoying it. You know, Sam Cole looks like he's probably not enjoying the ground. Castle books more faster than he can. Um, so he's come out of it 100%. John Cardew looks after and rides him. It's very happy with him. And we'll probably go to the D PJ Moriarty now in um, the Dublin Racing Festival. Okay. And that'll tell us more with regards to Cheltenham. And Charajan, yeah, have a great record with him. He rode two grade ones on him now and a Galway hurdle, of course. Um, and I presume he'll go straight to Cheltenham now, will he? Um, possibly. He did last year. Um, but there is the Irish Champion hurdle back in Leperstown again at Dublin Racing Festival. So we'll have to consider that. Um, you know, the ground in Leperstown is a very free draining course, it's always very dry up there. Um, so which suits him, of course, which suits him exactly. And he wore a tongue strap yeah, at Christmas, he'd worn it once before, but he was after he got that bad fall, he was running bad. So he probably didn't need a tongue strap at Christmas because the ground was good, but at least we know now it doesn't negatively affect him. Mm -hmm. And we can put it on him on soft ground, and that might help him. So we'll, we'll consider going to Leperstown in February, and Chapman Hurd is the main aim. And then Album Fowo uh, had a seasonal reappearance in Tremor and he was very impressive, just like last year. I'd imagine he then goes straight to Cheltenham like he did last year before winning the Gold Cup. Yeah, it's not a preparation you'd, you'd set out to do. No. Um, but you know, the way it, the winter was last year with dry ground and everything, and Tremor is always the opposite of, of Leperstown. It's a very soft course. Um, and it worked last year. And so we just we were sitting around and we kind of said, well, if it, if, it, if it isn't broke. Stop broke, don't fix it. Exactly. And you know, if you look at sizing John, he had an unusual prep the year. He won the Gold Cup. He sat over two miles at Christmas, went to Kinloch Bray, went to the Irish Gold Cup. And Native River, I'm pretty sure, only had one run maybe in February the year he won the Gold Cup. So sometimes it mightn't be the ideal way of doing it, but if it works, why change it? And Ken Boy, who had his seasonal reappearance in Leopardstown, was fourth but not beaten too far. You must have been delighted with his run, and how is he now ahead of? I, I'd imagine he will go to Dublin Racing Festival, will he? Yeah, we um, we were very happy with him because a few of our horses have been needing their first run. You know, a lot of the horses have have come on for their first run, but this year we just didn't get a, a, a clear couple of weeks to work the horses really hard. And um, you know, a lot of them weren't maybe as straight as they usually would be. So he just got tired down to the last, which was understandable. Um, he didn't go to the Irish Gold Cup last year, but this year we probably will because he missed his, his first run. He ran the Common Oil last year, but obviously this year he couldn't. So he's from Ardenhurst, fine. Rod Dudfield is very happy with him. And um, hopefully we can go to Leperstown and have more luck back in Cheltenham. You know, he was on seat yeah, at the first definitely. last year, so. Um, Hopefully he can get a fair crack at the whip this time. He showed how good he was because when he went back to Punchestown after the fall in Cheltenham, then he beat the Gold Cup winner in Album Photo then. Exactly. You know, last year he won great ones at Leperstown, great ones at Aintree and at Punchestown. So he's obviously a horse of huge ability. He's been to Cheltenham three times and hasn't won. Um, that is a concern. Um, but uh, I think there's no real reason for that. I think, I think that might just be a circumstance. So hopefully he can get a fair crack at the whip this time. On the so ran a cracker in the Tingle Creek back in Sandown, just uh, touched off by Defidus, so waiting patiently just in behind them. And will they have a rematch now next week in the Ascot Chase? I hope so. We'll be, our fellow will be heading there. Um, I'd be, I, I really think he could turn the tables. Like I said, a lot of hours we need in the first run, so I thought it was a, a fantastic one out of him first time out. Um, I expect him to, to turn turn the tables with Defidus Soy. Maybe Altior might turn up, that'll make things very interesting. Um, but he, he just shows no sign of slowing down, you know, Virginia Basco, who's riding him all the time, he's still pulling her arms out, there's no handbrake on him. Um, I think he'll go very well in Ascot, and I, I'd love to see him in the Queen Mother this year. Um, I'd love to get a spin on the Queen Mother, but 
um, we'll see the Ryanair as an option as well. Very exciting horse, of course. Uh, Stormy Ireland was very impressive. She done what she does at her at her best uh, out in front. How is she, and will she go straight to the mare's hurdle now? Uh, yeah, she's only a little, um, a, a small mare at the height of the table, and um, but she loves her racing. She's great scope. She's very enthusiastic. Um, she was very good at Leprechaun at Christmas. Uh, she was placed last year in Shetland. I'm not sure. She could have another run possibly, um, but she doesn't take a lot, of, a lot of to get fit or anything. So she ha she has the option to go straight to Shetland as well. Uh, Burrow Saints, who won a race at Punchestown, a uh, great ride by Rachel Blackmore, which was a one, two, three, four for your father in the race. Mm -hmm. Any plans for him? Um, you know, I imagine we're probably going to be looking at the Grand National. Um, you know, obviously he won the Irish Grand National last year, so he, he shows he stays, he shows he can jump. So it was a big performance of a novice. And again, his first run back, I feel like a lot of, like a lot of hours he needed it. Rachel stole the race in Punchestown, so is the form of that race a little questionable? Perhaps, but I think we'll probably be working backwards from Adrian. Uh, Tiger Tap Tap, who won very easily in Clonmel on Thursday, that's uh, two wins from his last two starts. He's entered in the, he's one of eight of entries for your father in the Betfair Hurdle. Is that where he'd go next, the first week of February? It's a possibility. Um, you know, he's he's a horse that was disappointed. He had a very good first run behind Sir Eric, and he disappointed us then. Um, but he, he's won his last two now, that's got his confidence up. That bet for her is worth an awful lot of money, so he, he appears to be fine after his Clamel run, but you know, you don't really know until maybe 10 or 12 days after when you step back up to full work. Um, so we'd have to consider that, but if, if he doesn't go there, he's definitely one to consider for the County Hurdle Coral Cup, those, all those big handicaps. Yeah, uh, appreciate it. Uh, son of Jeremy won very impressively at Christmas on the last day at Leopardstown. Um, is he your best chance if uh, going to the champion bumper in Chatham? At this moment, it looks like it, you know. Um, he's, a, he's a typical example of, he got beaten here at the start of December, um, looked like he had no excuses, and then he's hacked up in um, Leopardstown. He's a different horse since he had that first run. He's He's shown a turn of foot at home. He, we always thought he was a galloper, which is why we went for that two and a half mile race. But his last few bits of work, he's shown a few gears, which is why I wasn't afraid to go slow in front and, and, and let it be a sprint. Um, he'll probably end up at the Dublin Race Festival at like Grade 2 bumper. And then if he performs well there, we'll go to Cheltenham. But he ticks all the boxes. He's, he, he has plenty of stamina, strong cruising speed, has a turn of foot. And for the champion bumper, he's got a, a sensible head. And that's worth an awful lot there, because I've ridden some horse there. And, before you even get out of the parade ring, their, their chance is gone. Just get get too he heated up. Mm. Um, just three horses there that are obviously exciting stable um, of the stable. Blue Sari, Tornado Flyer and Lorena. How are all of those after their last runs? Yeah, they were all disappointing um, at Christmas. Obviously, Lorena burst, which is worrying. Um, but at the same time, we, I, I've seen horses burst to do it once and, yeah. and, and they come back. So um, she's riding away. We're just giving her an easy time. And you know, once we feel she's happy to step up, we'll try and find a race for her then. So maybe she wants to go up and up and trip, possibly. You know, uh, Blue Sari has come out of the race fine, ran too bad to be true, just draw a line through it. And Tornado Flyer was the same, he he's he had a respiratory infection afterwards, so he has an excuse. So probably just a few of ours, Vita Rev is another one, a few of ours just were maybe a bit under the weather. Which, when you have that many horses, there's always going to be some, but all of them are sound, so. Give them some easy time, they should be back to full health and soon. Uh, carefully selected who runs tomorrow in the Grey Tree Chase in Punchestown. He won his beginners here in Fairy House um, just before Christmas. Uh, what are the plans with him if he gets through to tomorrow? All right, he'd obviously be um, something on, on your list that you'd love to ride in the National Hunt Chase, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Um, he was my office mentor on Christmas, and it grounds just dried up a lot. And he, he's a very old fashioned horse, so we decided to be air on the side of caution. Uh, he runs tomorrow two and a half miles. I don't, he's not slow, and um, you know, he was second champion bumper and even when he was second here he made the mistake of the second last and so had a great turn of foot to get back in front by the last so while he could be a four miler he's a stayer with a turn of foot a bit like appreciated um i schooled him after racing a punch down there on new year's eve he's done very well he needs experience so he's going to run tomorrow and then in order to qualify for national chase he has to run over three miles before the before the race so there's not too many options for him he might have to go to the 10 up maybe in navin if he's going to go for the four mile chase route um and you need experience for that race because... Like you said, he hasn't had a lot of runs, hasn't mm. he? No, no he's, he doesn't have a huge amount of um, even racing experience, let alone jumping experience. And we ran in two point of points, but the formal chase is a handicap, basically, because there's no other graded novice where there's 18 runners, and they're all trying to be in the first four or five, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, the article today at TDR say of 10, 12 runners, so mm. you need a horse that will be able to hand, handle a handicap. So I'm hoping he'll have 
two runs before it could for Uh Black Bow, who unfortunately got a bad fall the last day in Navin, he runs tomorrow. How is he ahead of tomorrow? Came out of the race fine. Um, beautiful horse, oil painting of a horse. Uh, can be keen going, which is his downfall. Um, did a silly thing with the last of Navin. He, he just dragged a tiny length through it. He's usually a very good jumper, so hopefully tomorrow we can make amends. Uh, a rare ride for you tomorrow, your father's biggest rival. You're riding for Gordon Elliott tomorrow in the uh, amateur handicap chase on a horse that was second here the last day, only I think 11 days ago, and the horse that beat him. He runs in the race as well. Um, excuse me for forgetting his name, Biddy. Biddy, uh, the boss. Yep, yeah, um, and there's a little bit of leeway with the weights now, so um, he should maybe be able to turn around the form then. Tomorrow. Hopefully, yeah, nice nice to get a ride for Gordon. I've had a few winners from our old um, Rapid Escape and um, um, uh, Felix Dejny and the women from before. So, uh, this horse, he's a 10 year old, he's had lots of runs in our toy, he's, he should be a good jumper, touch wood. Um, as well as he's coming back quick, it maybe it, it is a slight concern. Um, but Gordon seems quite sweet to them, so. Hopefully, now, I've never won the Amateur National, it'd be nice to take that off the list. Surely would. Um, looking forward, to, there's no bumper tomorrow in Punchestown, but looking forward to bumper on Monday in Punchestown. Is there any idea of what will run you? Your father has four entered in that. Um, Rhyme and Rhythm is a nice horse who was second on her debut. Yeah, um, sure. No, but Willie, it's always the decision's made about five minutes before, but um, I suppose Rhyme Rhythm ran very well here behind one of Gordon's, not here, sorry, in Punchestown. Um, and has new owners now. I think she she's probably the one maybe I'd like to ride there. Um, Miss Punch qualifies for an auction race in Limerick, so we might wait for that. It's a Yates filly who was fourth in Punchestown mm. as well. Yeah, um, so you know, those, when you qualify for those, those new auction races, you should probably, should probably run them. Kill out the Bell is a nice filly. I think she might want nicer ground. She's um, by presenting, yeah? Yeah, which, you know, and they, they sometimes want nicer ground. Um, but I think she'll, she'll win her races. And Dicer Diamond, I'm very well the first day. Her dam was very good mare. A uh, Dyset Dancer won five from six runs for us, so um, we might try, hopefully we, we can split them up and, and find a race for them. Uh, just looking forward to, I know you say you don't know even though what's going to happen for Monday, but looking to, uh, back here at Fairy House on Tuesday, there's a horse uh, with big interest, uh, Power of Paws, who won a two and a half mile punches town point to point, and he's now with your yard now. Um, the horse that finished second him, well beaten, six lengths, he's recently won a bumper in Stratford for Evan Williams. How's he go? Is he a nice horse? He actually won work this morning. I like him a lot. He's, he's, um, he's a... Son of Dion, yeah? Yeah, he's a speedy type of horse. He's not, not overly big, um, has a few gears. I, I know the day he won, it was quite good ground. Actually, rode in the race for Kate Harrington and pulled up the sore shins. So he might be seen at his best at good ground, possibly. Um, but he has a few gears. I'm looking forward to seeing him, seeing him out. And just before I let you go, there's a horse that doesn't um, happen often, your father, to have a runner in Market Raisin. So he has a panic attack, a four-year-old filly by Canford Cliffs entered in the Allen Swinbank Memorial listed bumper next Thursday. What's the plan with her? Obviously, you, if she does run, you won't be riding her. Ten stone three because of her age. Um, what's the idea there? Uh, the owner sent her to us, um, she's a flatbed mare, but doesn't look it, she's actually a fine big 16-2 strong mare, she's a mare you'd love to go point of pointing with, with her for a seat, but her pedigree wouldn't suggest it. Um, she was meant to run in Shetland on New Year's Day, she actually travelled over with her head girl Rachel Robbins, but she got balloted out, so right. they had to come back. Um, so the owners were keen to try get some black type, um, and you know the weights over there are very light. So I think Paul probably watching his watching his dinners from now till Thursday. Yeah. But uh, she's a mare we like, and we'd be expecting a good run. Very good. Listen, I'll let you go have a shower. Thanks very much for taking time, and well done again today. And best of luck for the season. No problem at all.